I'm here with Eamon Hoxie, former chair of the ISO Technical Committee that developed the standard ISO 13485 for medical devices. The standard has recently been revised with the new version just published. So Eamon, firstly, can you tell us a little bit about the standard and why it's so important for the industry? Well, ISO 13485 describes a quality management system that's applicable for medical devices and for regulatory purposes. And um, many jurisdictions have got quality management system requirements uh, for medical device uh, manufacture and supply. So it's really important that there's a common understanding between the regulators and the industry as what's into what's required uh, for their quality management system. It's also important to customers so that they have confidence that the medical devices that they're purchasing and using, um, either on themselves or on their patients, uh, put, are safe and perform as intended. So we're looking for making sure that customer and regulatory requirements are incorporated into the quality management system and that we've got transparency between customers, regulators and manufacturers. Great. And, and so why was the decision made to revise the standard? Well, all ISO standards are revised and reviewed from time to time to make sure that they remain up to date. The second edition of ISO 13485 was published in 2003. So when we did the last review, um, we had discussions with the regulatory authorities and we both, uh, both industry and the authorities, uh, felt that it was time to revise the standard uh, to make sure that it remained aligned with the expectations of regulators. Because since 2003, what's happened is a number of jurisdictions have either revised or introduced regulations for medical devices. So we want to make sure the quality management system requirements align fully with those, uh, those regulatory requirements. And can you give us a quick summary then of the key changes in the new version? Well, the changes go right across the life cycle of the medical device. And it's important to um, bear in mind that ISO 13485 does deal with the whole life cycle from design and development through manufacture, uh, um, transport, transportation to the customer, distribution, um, and on to the end of life, and uh, installation and servicing of devices which, um, which require that. So it's a life cycle process. And what we've done is increase the linkage to the regulatory requirements throughout that life cycle, particularly the documentation that's required for regulatory purposes. We've also looked at the different organizations that play a crucial role during that life cycle. So it's not only the organization whose name is on the medical device when it's placed on the market, but contract manufacturers, um, uh, providers of logistics, um, distributors, importers uh, into jurisdictions from outside that jurisdiction. So we wanted to make sure the roles and responsibilities of these different um, players in the life cycle were, were covered. We wanted to improve the uh, requirements around design and development particularly focusing on the usability of the medical device and how that medical device is transferred from the design and, and development phase into manufacture. So that's seamless and the device is able to be manufactured um, effectively. And at the last phase of the life cycle of the medical device, we've increased the emphasis on post-market surveillance so that the manufacturer is looking at the experience of the use of their medical device um, in practice um, and also um, detailing their, their responsibilities in dealing with complaints that are, occur from the field and are reported to the manufacturer, both in terms of the process that they use for complaint handling and also the link to reporting events uh, that meet reporting criteria to regulatory authorities. Finally, we've looked at, at the area of co what's called corrective actions, how the manufacturer responds to prevent recurrence of an issue with a medical device. And we've looked specifically at how the planning of corrective actions is taking place and ensuring that those actions, when necessary, are taken without undue delay. Thanks, Eamon, for that very useful and informative update. And if you want to find out more about ISO 13485, see the ISO website.